Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending where you are. So I'm going to talk about uh, turbulence parameter estimation with uh, parallel wave front sensors. And basically, uh, why do you want to estimate R0 and L0? And basically, the idea is that you, you want to do it for site evaluation and characterization. Uh, if you want to schedule observations, might be uh, might be of use. Uh, you, if you want to update uh, temporally your AO, AO system, you also might be interested in it. And if you want to do a point uh, spread function a prediction, you're going to use uh, both R0 and L0 in the in the in the prediction. Interferometry also needs it for the optimization of fringe trackers, and therefore this was addressed by many experiments. Uh, that we heard today and in the past. And we are going to focus on uh, Shaq Hartman wavefront sensors. Basically, the idea here is that um, they are everywhere. So, uh, in, in the case of Paranal, there are lots of, uh, of uh, Shaq Hartman wavefront sensors. And they have uh, the interest of having a spatial temporal synchronism with, uh, with the observations and an identical turbulent path. So the, the optical path, of course, is not the same, but the turbulent path is, is the same with the observations. And there was, of course, a lot of previous work on this. So the first message I want you to, to, to take from this talk is that if you're going to work on uh, R0 or L0, estimation cross uh, coupling is, is unavailable. This is because uh, the shaq hartman is a gradient sensor and the gradient matrix is not orthogonal, although the, the polynomial are, are, and therefore, if you're estimating R0 and L0 from the, the Zernik uh, variances, you, you, you're going to be stuck with uh, with uh, with uh, cross coupling. And even if you come up with some uh, clever idea like diagonalizing the, the Zernik covariance with with the change of base, it will not solve your problem because if in in particular in the Karlman law of the bases you don't you don't have a fitting function for R0 and L0 uh, estimation. And you should bear in mind that statistical independence, which is the idea behind the base, this is not the same as uh, as geometric uh, coupling. So it's not at, at all obvious that theoretically it will even work. And so uh, the conclusion is that this this effect is unavailable, and you have to correct for it. So how how do we correct for for cross coupling? We model it. Basically, I, I'm presenting here uh, the the let me just try to get a laser pointer. Um, so I'm actually not able to launch a laser po pointer. I don't know if you see my mouse. I don't think so in Zoom. Yeah, we can see it. Oh, perfect. So the, 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 the Bs are actually your, your measurements. The A's are, let's say, the un, un, unaffected quantities. The sigma is the noise, and this gamma is the is 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 the cross coupling. And so, uh, the the idea is how can you get the A's without uh, with from from the B's? And uh, what we do in our approach is that we model the noise uh, con uh, contribution to the variance. Of course, you cannot model the noise; you just you just can uh, model the the variance of the noise. And we uh, have a, a way to estimate the cross coupling. So it it the the, the way is analytical. You, you can, can get a, an expression for the cross coupling that depends only on R0 and L0. And this uh, brings about an interactive method where you, 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 you do a first estimation of R0 and L0, and then you re-estimate everything again with, a, with an update of the, of the cross coupling uh, matrix and uh, hope you hope that it will converge. And it, it, it actually converges. So, um, what we are basically uh, doing is that we start with biased uh, measurements of, uh, of R0 and L0, and then we run uh, the, the interaction, uh, the, the interactive uh, approach. And we each, each time we do the model fitting, we, we update the, the cross coupling correction, and the, the result is shown here in the, the figure. So, the, for you to understand this figure, Let's look at the, at the right part. So here in the in the horizontal axis, you have the radial order used in the fit. So when you're you're you're, you're fitting R not, you're actually changing the radial order. You're using more and more radial orders, and the, the color is the interaction. So at interaction zero, you see that you get an R not that depends on the number of radial orders that you use. So it, 
it means that the, the usual approach of estimation of R0, where you just set up a good uh, range of radial orders, is, is completely biased. It, it depends on your range. But when, when we use uh, uh, the interactive approach, which are the green and the uh, and the blue curves, you see that you converge to the value that was set uh, in the in the this is a simulation that was set in the simulation in the in the phase screens. And here, you, in, in in the right curve, you have interaction. The horizontal axis is, is is the interaction, and you see that no matter how how many orders you're using, it will converge quickly to the to the value. And the same is true to the outer scale. So again, we have uh, uh, radial orders in the horizontal axis, and you see that interaction zero, you have a bias measurement, and you rapidly converge to the to the to the expected value. And so this is uh, simulations. What about real data? So this is uh, this is uh, what you get at uh, at Paranal. You you have actually thirteen uh, wavefront sensors, and with Gravity Plus, it was referred before. You're going to have four more. So typically you have Saxo, which a lot, which which has a lot of uh, of sampling, of course. Uh, then you have the Ciaos, which work in the infrared, and um, the sampling is is not so good. They are, I, I would say, analogs to um, to Naco in the infrared. You have the Naomi's, where you have really uh, not very good sampling, but they are spread over the platform as the Ciaos. These are the adaptive optics feeling, uh, feeding the small AT telescopes. And you have, of course, the AOF with, with four, four wavefront sensors in a single telescope. And so uh, if you want to estimate from real data, you can use open loop. So I'm just going uh, quickly. Uh, the pros of open loop is that uh, it is simple. The cons is that you're going to use science time to do that. And it's very easy. You just from your slopes, you you generate your variances, and then you 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 you, you estimate the, the turbulence parameters. If you are in closed loop, then you are in a more uh, a tricky uh, tricky business uh, because you have to com to combine combine the deformable mirror data with uh, with the, the, the wavefront uh, sensor data, and there are lots of difficulties uh, related to to calibration actually that you're going to you're going to um, to, to encounter when you want to converge from voltages to slopes and do an absolute measurement because we are, we are doing an absolute, absolute measure, measurement of some variances. So just to show you some data, uh, in, in, in the left you have a, a, a seeing estimation with, which is the current seeing estimation uh, working in the AOF. You see that the, the value that you get depends on the on the number of modes used in the fit and also on the number of modes used used in the re reconstruction matrix. And here you have our 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 method, and you see that our method is not uh, is not sensitive to the number of modes in the reconstruction matrix because uh, we we have the interactive uh, approach. And also, although there is a variation in the, in, the, in the number of modes that you are uh, radial orders that you're using in the fit, the variation is very small. The, the variation of, of are not that we are encountering is 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 very small, and uh, we can have here a, a snapshot of 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 the temporal uh, e e evolution where you see that you, we we can actually um, across a, a a run we we can get very uh, very um, consistent results uh, across a run for both the the, the seeing and and the, and the outer scale, of course. We are also very precise. If you if if, if you look at the data, we have a, a, a reasonable precision. And then I call this the curse of high precision. So we we are very precise on the on the measurement of R naught and L naught. But we should bear in mind that is a not does not make sense physically. This is because uh, von Karman is is an approximation. You should keep in mind uh, it's not the reality. And we know that there are several layers and not just one layers, as you've seen during this session and going to see in the next talk. And of course, there are effects of non-stationarity and correlation of the phase during the measurement. So uh, R0 and L0 are just an, an, an approximation of what is really happening. And so we should not expect very high precision. However, we do think that we can use the temporal evolution of, of, of the data to uh, to, to do some uh, some interesting studies. So future prospects, I'm just closing up. So we we still have a lot of difficulties on, on closed loop uh, data issues on uh, on uh, having exactly the the, the 
the correct absolute mirrors uh, uh, mirror shape. We we have a lot of uh, pipeline um, uh, to run on the HR data. It is uh, problematic. We have some problems also on this, but we are working on it. And uh, one of the questions we are we are going to answer is how does the, the estimation changes with this range of uh, wavefront sensors that I just presented? Uh, how does especially for the interferometry where we have R naught and L naught across the platform? For, uh, how does it, it change uh, in, in, in the platform? And uh, what, what is the, um, the effect of non-stationarity? So we we're going to really have a, a detailed uh, temporal evolution across, um, across the data sets and, and we, we, we can address this. And in, in the future, we are planning to do uh, telemetry data creation. So uh, probably in the next workshop, we are already, we are already be, being, we, are, we will be able to deliver some data and um, stay tuned. Thank you. Okay, th thank you, Paolo. Um, so I think what we'll do is because there's a discussion session after the next um, talk, um, if you have any questions for Paolo, you've got a, a few minutes now to think about them um, and we'll handle questions for Tim and Paolo um, at the same time. Um, if that's okay with you, Paolo? I, uh, uh, my collaborators are, are in, the, in, the, <laughs> in, in the room, so I leave to, to Joan and, and Paolo. I have to teach, unfortunately, so I'm stuck. I have to oh. give a class <laughs> well, in five well. minutes from now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, then I guess good good luck with your class, um, and we'll we'll move on to the next speaker. Um, but if you have any questions for Paolo, I'm sure that either his collaborators can answer them, or we can uh, we can answer them later in an email. So.